Hi, and here's part two of my tutorial on creating this um, heads up display for uh, Final Cut Pro and Motion 5. Uh, so, we're creating this in Motion 5, and uh, it'll be a generator that will be able to be used within Final Cut Pro. Um, or you can also use it in Motion 5 to create different um, type of effects. So, uh, what we're aiming to make is something along the lines of this type of um, gauge you can see here. So you can see it looks like it kind of glows and, and um, finally uh, we, we can use it to composite into a, uh, a video something like this. So I've got a complete tutorial that shows you how to actually make this, um, this type of hologram type watch effect. Uh, so you can find those on my YouTube channel also on my blog. Um, so part one of this tutorial we had already created the basic uh, outline type of shape like this. Uh, we'd added uh, different brush effects to, to give this light type of effect. And now I want to add some more detail to this gauge here. Uh, oh, and we also animated it as well. So you can see this is what we've got so far. Okay, so now I want to add into this um, like, like an, an indicator, which is gonna go on here, which will which will, 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 will animate. So again, I'll grab my, um, uh, let's go over to the gauge here and what we'll do is we'll duplicate this uh, circle here uh, that would be the easiest thing to do so we just uh, go onto here and go to duplicate and now we'll change the brush color so let's change this over to red this darkish red here and we want to also then alter the the width of the brush now you can see because we're using this um, this type of uh, brush you see we've just got these light spots here. So I want to turn that, that brush type off, go back to solid, and that will give us now a solid color for, for our indicator. And then again, we'll play around with the width just to get it to about uh, the width that we want. So let's have it something like that. And then I'm going to change the scale. So this sits just above our orange line. So I want to scale it up a little bit so it sits just above that orange line there like this. Okay. Now I'll come back over to my shape. We'll change our end caps to square and that will just change the ends. You see here we've got a slightly rounded end. That one there I just changed to square. So we'll change the other one to square as well. So there we go. So now our end caps are square and then our last point offset we can move around and that will give our our kind of rising effect on our gauge now i want this to kind of jump around a little bit um so you could keyframe it you could you know move a couple of frames and and adjust this position move a few frames again and adjust it again um but it's a little bit tedious process to do so we're going to uh, we're going to create just some random movement to this uh last point offset parameters so you select that and we right click on it and we go to add parameter behavior and we'll go to randomize now this will bring up uh, you see here in our behaviors we've got randomize now available so if we play this you'll see now there's a little bit of movement and jitter in that now I want a bit more than that I want it to move more so we'll we'll alter our, our amount here and let's play that again so now it's moving around more, but it's a little bit too fast. It's jumping around a little bit too fast. So we'll, we'll decrease our frequency and we'll decrease the noise a little bit. Now let's check that out. Now you see it's moving a little bit more smoothly back and forth. So let's change our amount. So this is our percentage amount that it'll move by. So up or down by a certain amount of percent. So let's go to around 20%. Now we'll see we'll get a greater amount of movement in there. Um, so what I want to do is set our start point for this, our last point offset. We'll drag that back a little bit more. So maybe to somewhere around here. And then we'll go back to our behavior. We'll increase the amount further. Now let's check that out. There we go. So now that just creates this random um, movement between different values for our last point offset. So it gives this kind of random movement to to um, our gauge. So 
you see this a lot quicker than going through and having to keyframe that movement. Um, it's also very easy to edit these parameters here and change the amount that it's actually moving by without having to go in and drag around keyframes. Um, so one other thing I now want to do to this is uh, this now stands out a little bit too much. You know, if you compare it to the rest, it's, it hasn't quite got the same look to it. So um, let's come over to our shape styles again. And let's go to textural. See what we've got in here. See, previously we were using that sash to give us those uh, little light dots, but I don't want to use that. Let's try something else. Um, see these chalk here. We've got chalk easy, chalk hard. I think I'll go with this chalk hard. So we drag this across and drop it on there. There, now you see the kind of effect we've got. So again, we just have to adjust that last point offset after we apply the brush effect. Uh, select our brush there, last point offset, there we go. So bring that back there and now let's play this. There, so you see it's, it hasn't got quite the same solid look to it now. It's got this more, more texturized look to it, a bit more believable and uh, blends in a little bit more with our view. Um, now because this was part of our group that we animated earlier, um, we, we won't have to do anything about this beginning animation because everything inside that group will just animate with it. So there we go, it comes up on the screen nicely. So that's how we add some, some randomization to, to that. Now, I want to make this flicker as it comes onto the screen. I want to give it a um, kind of look like, it, like it's flickering onto the screen. So what we'll do is we'll just edit the whole group that everything is in. So let's minimize all of these. Let's create a new group. We'll call this parent. And let's drag both of these separate groups into that parent group. Now what we're going to do is keyframe the opacity value. So let's open up then our keyframe, uh, sorry, our video editor there again, so we can see these, these keyframes. So we can hide or show that by clicking on this. So we'll open up our keyframes there. And in our parent here, we'll add a new keyframe and we'll drag the opacity down to zero. Now let's go forward a couple of frames, say four frames, and we'll drag our opacity up. Let's go forward one, add a keyframe again. Let's go forward three drag it back down, forward one, add again. So that will give us our first flicker. But because our thing is drawing on the screen, it's not overly noticeable. So we continue to add these. Add a keyframe again. Bring that back up. So just continue like this, adding in these keyframes, moving around the opacity. Until you get the desired effect. Let's check that out. Yeah, so you see it flickers a little bit. So it's almost like it's it's like a light turning on. It's like the hologram or the, the head-up display turning on and it, it flickers slightly as it's coming onto the screen. So there we go. I think this is starting to take, take effect now. So in the next tutorial, um, we're going to add in, let's say, a center gauge to so this, a center dial, um, like a needle point which will move around, and then we'll add in some text um, and, and a, a, a counter. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in part three of this tutorial.